Welcome to our daily word this morning. As always, I'm glad you could find time to join me and carve out time to be with me. I appreciate that. It's a cold, dreary, icy, early, icy Tuesday morning. Change spots in my office trying to find a comfortable place to be. This probably isn't my final destination. I don't find it very comfortable, but just kind of moving around a little bit to see what's most comfortable. I felt like sitting at my desk made it seem so formal, and I really don't want this time to be so formal. I want it to be a time that we learn together and have conversation together and and that you would offer feedback from me. Um, so as always, thanks for being with me as we share this continued journey together through our daily word. Today is daily word number 848 in our long journey together. And so this morning I have chosen from Psalm 111. And Psalm 111 says these words, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, and those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. So, of course, if you're a football fan, we are in the midst of the playoffs, and there's been some really good games, and it's been fun to watch. My team didn't make the playoffs. Maybe your team did and got beat. Maybe your team didn't make the playoffs. Maybe your team is still in the playoffs and you're excited as there's one more game to decide um, who goes to the Super Bowl from the AFC and from the NFC. Basketball season is full steam ahead in high school and college and the professional ranks. And I got to thinking about <clears throat> all of this. You know, I'm a sports fan. I love all of it. And, uh, my favorite basketball player of all time happens to be Larry Bird. You know, he's this amazing character. And if you, if you ever watch any, any videos, any conversations, they talk about who Larry was and that he was a trash talker, but that he backed up his trash talking. And then we have this conversation this time of year always, especially in football, about who's the greatest of all time, right? And... Um, that debate rages on. Larry Bird made a valid point the other day. I watched a video where he said, we talked about the greatest of all time and the era he played in. But then he said, have you ever watched LeBron James? Have you watched Clay Thompson? There were two guys last night who went for 60 and 72 points in the NBA. He said, you know, it's unfair to compare. But we all have our favorites, right? We we talk about who the GOAT is, who are who the fastest player is, who the best player is. And, you know, in the NFL now, there's uh, plenty of, of talking to go around. But the psalmist, the psalmist kind of changes the tune for us a bit. When the psalmist talks about who God is, the greatest of all time, if you will. The psalmist has one strong statement after another about who God is. God is great. God's word work is marked by majesty and splendor. God has shown the power of God's works and they will stand forever. The psalmist goes on and on about who God is in the midst of the world and our lives. But there's this one notable difference between how we heap praise on our heroes and maybe they're not athletes, maybe they're singers, maybe they're dancers, maybe they're teachers, whatever it is. Woven in the praise of God's power and might by the psalmist 
is that the recognition that God chooses to be connected in a relationship with each of us despite our weaknesses. Isn't that a powerful statement? God chooses to be connected to us in spite of our weaknesses. God is praised for being gracious and full of compassion. God is praised for sending redemption to us, God's people. God is praised for always remembering God's covenant promises to us. What are those promises? That God promises to never leave us nor forsake us. That God promises to always be in our midst. That God promises to love and uphold us and sustain us. That God forgives us and, and helps us to move forward in our lives. God chooses to be in relationship with you and with me and with all of creation. And you know, we like to heap praise on all of our heroes who we consider the greatest of all time. It's, it's natural. It's who we are. You know, we all, we all like to have heroes. But the psalmist reminds us that in our lives where we're most deeply connected, where we're held up, where we are sustained despite our weaknesses and who we are, is through and with God. And those are powerful statements. And then it's also a reminder to me, you know, that we hold each other up in our covenant connections with each other. I've been having a lot of trouble lately with steps and with trying to fall. I've, the last couple, three, four weeks, maybe more, have been a real struggle. And in our house, we have to go down three steps to get to where the fireplace is at and where we mostly watch TV. Every night's a struggle. So last night I was going down, I actually handed Diane my computer because I was going to do some work and I almost bit the dust. And I said to Diane, I'm just going to have to stay upstairs. And she said, no, that's why I'm here. I can help you. Now, you know, helping someone who's falling is a bad choice usually because then both people get hurt. But it's a reminder, I think, for me, that in the midst of my life where I'm struggling the most, and I haven't fallen yet, and I'm trying not to, I'm being extra careful, extra, extra careful to hold on all the time. Um, it's a reminder to me of our deep connection to each other, but importantly, what the psalmist reminds us of, our deep connection to God through God's covenant who chooses to love us just like we are, who chooses to sustain us and, and to redeem us, God's people. The final words, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. We practice it so we can have a good understanding of who God is. Might we in our lives be reminded of how we hold each other up, how we sustain each other, but more importantly, how God, how God in covenant with us um, holds us up and doesn't leave us and sustains us in our lives. That's our word for today. I hope it's a good word for you as it is for me as we live our lives together. Um, thanks for being with me this morning. Know of God's love that surrounds you. Know of my love for you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day and please stay safe.